Hi, welcome to the open day course information okay, so. session for photography and visual arts. I'm Misha Myers and I'm the course director of creative arts for visual arts, photography, and dance and drama. And I'm here with my colleagues from photography and visual arts. My name is Tarika Bolasangevi and I'm a lecturer in photography. And I'm Cameron Bishop and I lecture in the visual arts. We and Deacon would like to recognise the various traditional lands on which our campuses are, are located. We acknowledge the land, waterways and airways of the Kulin Nations and the Gunjitmara people. We acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging of all the lands on which we work, study and live and pay our respect to all Aboriginal Islands peoples. Thanks, Cam. So today, um, in our, our webinar today, we're going to talk about why study at Deakin, why study creative arts at Deakin, especially. Um, and we're going to look at the, the structure of the course and some of the units and, and how it works. Um, we're going to look at the facilities, talk about uh, employability and creative careers and how we prepare our students for that. And then we'll come to how to apply and the entry requirements and the pathways that are available to you, the different pathways available for applying. And then look at the support that's offered for our students at Deakin. So just to start with, why study creative arts at Deakin? I know for some of you, it will be your lifelong dream to pursue your passion and this is your chance to really go for it. So we'll talk about that. And when you're in a position where you're following your passion, the thing that you're most curious about and you're interested in, you're using all of your faculties and playing to your strengths. Opportunities start to open up because people are seeing you achieve your best. Firstly, we aim to raise aspirations and to do this, we expect as much of ourselves as we do our students. Creative Arts at Deakin is known for its excellence, not only in Australia, but globally. In 2019, Deakin was ranked the top 100 universities worldwide for performing arts, according to the QS World University Rankings by subject, which is determined by feedback received from our industry employers and academic peers. And we'll talk more about how our courses are close to the arts industries and model learning on the current behavior and work practices in the creative arts industries. And to ensure that our graduates have their best foot forward, into a professional career in the arts once they leave us. So the course is, um, the, there's a common structure that's shared across all four of the degrees in the creative arts. And so today we're talking about photography and visual arts, but we also have drama and dance in the portfolio of four degrees. And we share a structure, a common structure with each discipline, um, pursuing its particular skills and focus within this structure. So there's a dynamic culture of performance and studio production and development, collaboration, experimentation, and public presentation and critique across all four of the degrees. And there's opportunities for interaction between them. There's two level three units designed to prepare you with high level business and management skills to present work professionally. And you have an opportunity to study at least two core electives in another creative arts discipline. So if you're studying visual arts, you can do units in photography as part of those electives that you'll see at the top that are um, from another creative arts discipline, or you could do in dance and drama. You also have the opportunity to study six free electives to shape your own distinctive pathway. And that can be from any unit that's available uh, across Deakin. And you might find within the School of Communication and Creative Arts, some complementary subjects that would work well with the skills you want to develop, such as film and TV, illustration design, animation, which might go well with a photography or visual arts degree, but you can really choose from any subject across the university for those electives. And you can also choose to study more creative arts discipline units. And we'll have a look at the, what's offered in um, visual arts and photography from those units a little bit later. 
But over, just to look at the left-hand side of this map, you'll see that there are these creative studio units that begin in the first year and carry on into the second and third. And these units are for creative arts students only. And where you build that community of um, working alongside students who share your common aspirations, both within your discipline, but within the arts as well. And as I said, there's interaction. There's interaction within these units between the different disciplines. We come together sometimes for moments where we might share lectures, we might share particular workshops, we might share common tasks and assignments and look at the way that we each approach a common theme. And over the three years, the, the work is about developing your original voice and leading towards you setting more independent objectives. So that in the third year, those final studios, you're really working on the work that you want to take out into the world. And in Creative Studio 3B, that's where the kind of culmination of the degree, and the work that you make happens as we put on a festival of graduate work. And alongside that is the unit exhibition and performance where you're going to gain some of those high level business and management skills to actually organize that festival of exhibition and performances with a, co a cohort of across the arts. And you'll learn all of that goes into the producing of an event, a public event, and it will be open to a public audience from the press, creating promotional materials, creating the catalog, to the installation and the production of all aspects of that event. Studying photography um, at Deakin University ensures that you'll have a really well-rounded um, uh, knowledge of the discipline of photography um, through our exploration of the history and the theory of the discipline, but also it gives you a really strong grounding in technical skills. And just as importantly, it gives you um, lots of experience in your conceptual skills and development. So at each level, first, second and third year, um, we're introducing you to uh, fundamental skills, whether that your interest lies in uh, digital imaging or some of the analog techniques. We're really lucky to still have an analog stream in our, in our degree. Um, but at all moments, it is about helping you develop your, your individual voice. Um, and we realise that it's as important to have those technical skills as it is to have that ability to communicate ideas and articulate the thinking behind your work. Importantly, you'll also be um, interacting with students uh, across disciplines, as Misha has already said. So there's opportunities to collaborate, to work in groups, but also to really develop um, your own voice, your own skills into a professional folio, which you uh, present in, in third year. We, um, we have a similar focus as photography on, on the technical aspects of, of making, uh, making work, particular to the, the 21st century to ensure that we're responsive to the many issues, I guess, that we, that we face as we, uh, we go forward, not only as individuals, but also um, as collectives and as a species being. So, I guess visual arts captures a range of approaches to making art in the 21st century. So painting, sculptural practice, digital technologies. Uh, also, we have a focus on public art. Staff work extensively with external organisations from uh, the Geelong Gallery to the NGV to councils and even uh, organisations like Melbourne Water. And these allow for internship opportunities and research projects to develop that are cross-disciplinary and problem solving in nature. Let's, we'll talk a bit more about each of these courses through the different discipline units that are offered. And um, if you remember back into the structure there, um, you had four of these discipline units that each course has to do. And you can choose, and then you have to choose two from another creative arts discipline. So these are both uh, studied by students studying on photography or visual arts, plus any of these units could have students from across Deakin, from across drama and dance. They will be doing um, some of these potentially. Um, it's up to you to choose which 
uh, out of the creative arts that you want to do as your electives. So it provides the opportunity. We've, we've chosen these four uh, foundational skills that we think are really important to build each of the disciplines. Um, so there's a kind of deepening of your knowledge and skills in these units, but there's also a kind of broadening of your, your skills through choosing two as electives in another discipline. And this allows you also to then create that unique pathway that complements your career aspirations and might complement with those other free electives that you choose. You can really deepen your, your skills in a particular discipline if you took all four of these and, and use some of those free electives to, to take a whole pathway in a discipline. So you could do both photography and visual art, for instance. In the uh, first year, you're uh, introduced to analog photography. Um, so we generally start with 35 mil cameras um, and you may not have your own, but we have a uh, fantastic media resource center, which we'll talk about later, where you can actually borrow equipment. Uh, then you move on to medium format, so 120 roll film, which you also learn to process uh, and print in the dark room. Um, and then in, uh, in the later years, you also get access to our, um, our large format cameras as well. Um, also in first year, we have an introduction to digital uh, photography. Um, so it introduces you to um, digital uh, uh, SLR cameras, um, processing digital images and then printing them. So uh, fine art printing is a really uh, strong aspect of our, of our course all the way through. So giving you access to um, all aspects of the digital workflow. Um, and then of course, photography is all about lighting. So um, it's super important that we have, um, you know, a photographic lighting unit, which deals with um, uh, not only studio professional lighting, but also ambient light and, and working inside and outside the studio. Um, also in second year, we have a photographic storytelling unit, which is a really interesting um, addition to the course, which helps you delve into more um, complex thinking around um, narrative, how we tell stories, how we observe, think, uh, process these ideas and then how we might structure that into a narrative. Um, and we also explore things like um, publishing um, and, uh, and photo books and all sorts of different other ways, cross-platform ways of communicating these stories. In drawing, for instance, we concentrate on observational uh, drawing skills and perception and creating illusion. In painting, we talk to mark making, we, but we also, at the same time, uh, uh, frame that in historical and critical contexts by looking back at the history of painting to inform what we do now in that medium. Um, digital, the digital practices unit, which is a new unit that we're all pretty excited about actually, because it gives us great avenues to work with our colleagues in uh, across art and performance, but also in the wider, school community as well because we're putting a real focus on the critical aspects of our engagement with new technologies particularly the relationship between uh, hardware and software new and old art making methodologies to not just kind of um, make them easier to use but to criticize the way we use them not just as as individuals but as i mentioned as uh a collective. From my perspective, I mean, I, I have an interest in digital practices, also have an interest in public art. So we're, I'm always working with external organisations to ensure that we have students working on real world, world projects. And this speaks to some of the other studio units that uh, Misha was talking about earlier. But I'm keen to ensure that students are working in internships and on research projects in, uh, in the real world, as I said that are not only individually focused, but collaborative in nature. One thing is curiosity and the arts have always pursued the unknown and we're expressing and articulating ideas that the world may not even have the words for yet. Inventing new ways of looking at things, behavior, objects, interacting with things and people in our environment in different ways and challenging others to, to really re-envision the world we live in. Um, it's an important contribution that art brings to the world, um, important in the time we're in at the moment, um, as we've seen how much art has contributed to lives. 
but that sense of curiosity is really important and and to face that unknown not to always know why we do something but because we feel we have to do that it's uh, we have a, a particular uh, imagination or imagination something that we're pursuing or inclination to pursue through the objects through the movement the, the camera uh, through the paint the, the pencil something that interests us that has caught our curiosity we also have to be courageous to pursue that that thing that may not be uh, understandable to others or that even to ourselves in in some way yet um, and we develop your skills as, as Tariq and Cam have been talking about uh, the critical skills to start to articulate that when you're ready to talk and write about what you do but also courageous in the sense uh, to forge a path, your own unique path, and to prepare you for, we prepare you for that in the course, because it's not a clear cut one always, and it takes time to develop. But you're also not alone on that path, and that's really important. Connectedness is, is really important for artists, and to recognize that you are connected, and that you are always, as an artist, even though uh, photography and visual arts might conventionally, traditionally be understood as solo occupations. That's not necessarily the way that artists are going about either of those disciplines in the contemporary uh, world. We see that artists are more often now forming collectives, not just to share resources, but also to co-author. But it's also important that artists are working together to help promote one another's visibility, their influence in the world, and access to resources. So there are some really good models of you know, workplaces where people are sharing those resources. And we have an example here of one of our graduates from photography that's done just that in pursuing ways to continue her career. Yeah, it just really embodies everything that you've just said there, Misha. She um, uh, studied the BCA in photography and then went on to do the honors year. Um, and then following that, she really um, you know, developed uh, you know, identified a niche in the market and a gap that needed to be filled in terms of um, offering people ac access to dark rooms. Um, so she and a partner set up uh, Noir Dark Room, as you can see here, which acted as a community dark room space. So she's connecting with the, the, the local community in, in Coburg and beyond. Um, but it's more than just a dark room for community to, to access. It's actually a um, a gallery space as well, which has um, enabled local artists and international artists to exhibit in that space. Um, beyond that, it's also a, a place where she teaches. So she offers workshops um, and it's been fantastic to see her really, in, you know, her resilience through this, this uh, current period where she's had to close the dark room temporarily um, to move those classes online um, and, to, and to keep that, that connectivity with her community going through uh, through Patreon. Um, so she's a, an, an excellent example um, of, of the, the type of um, person who emerges from this. Uh, and she's also been a great mentor to, to other students who've, um, who've come through our course as well. So it's, it's great to, to see what Jess is doing. The skills that creative artists have are sought after, not just in the arts, but beyond in other industries. So I think it's really important to think about like the example of Jess. We have here another example of a, a graduate from photography that again is, is one of those thought leaders and uh, someone who's created a particular niche. Um, but also, you know, not just going out to get a job, but making jobs, making jobs for themselves and others. And Tarika, again, do you want to talk about Molly's? Sure, yeah. So Molly um, had a different pathway through, um, through photography. Um, and she um, actually sort of brought together in creating her business, she brought together her expertise in um, and her interest in, in, in that crossover in that space between art and science. Um, so it's been really interesting to see um, her development of Pattern Studios and uh, the types of really diverse um, projects that her company is now working on. Often uh, employers are looking for soft skills across industries. These are really highly um, sought after uh, in the top skills sought after by employers. Uh, but I like to think about those in following Richard Sennett, sociologist Richard Sennett's idea that communication is a hard skill. It's hard cooperation, hard communication. 
that actually these are hard skills and they take, they're not something that you just inherently born with. They are require practice and training in real world context. And I think that's really, you know, what we do in this course is provide you with the opportunity to practice those skills in a real world context is both modeled on the real context in which you might work, that studio practice, exhibitions, the working, work integrated learning, um, but also engaging with industry throughout the degree. We've gone through uh, an expansive phase, particularly, well, slowly over the last 10 years and um, uh, more acutely in the last sort of five years, I guess, not only in terms of uh, recruiting, extraordinary work with us, but also um, in ensuring our spaces are uh, uh, up to scratch and at world standard and, and certainly the visual arts studios that we have um, allow us to, to practice all the things I mentioned before, like painting, printmaking, 3D, spatial, sculptural practices, um, and also uh, to up our digital skills as well. So at both Geelong Waterfront and at um, Burwood, we have dedicated studio spaces for students to, to work in. Um, there also, we also have exhibition spaces, so our public facing spaces that allow us to work with students, not only to, towards public presentation, but also in critical development. So during the trimester, we can book spaces to hang work. There's, there's plenty of opportunities for the spaces that, that we have. And our tech staff, of course, are there to support us through all those um, uh, disciplinary approaches that I mentioned before. They're all uh, highly skilled in um, photography, painting, printmaking, 3D, as I said, and um, in the digital space. So we have um, what's called a media resource centre at, at both campuses, uh, where students can access um, a whole range of analogue and digital equipment, um, as well as other, as it says here, historic alternative photography equipment. So that will set you up for first, second and third year. Um, and, you know, all of that equipment can be borrowed as well as um, professional lighting kits that can be taken off campus. Um, we have uh, state-of-the-art um, studio, photographic lighting studios um, that are accessible to students, um, not just during, uh, you know, normal business hours, but students can access them so that they can be working in the studio space um, around the clock. Um, we also have access to um, our uh, Mac labs, um, for any digital processing, scanning. And we have dedicated print labs that are just for um, our art and performance students um, who are able to print from first year, get access to all of our Epson printers that print up to A3. And you also have access to work with one of our technicians um, uh, to print on our large format printers that we have at both campuses, which print, you know, 1.4 metres, um, you know, as long as the roll. And you can print on a, a wide range of, of media um, as well. While a lot of other universities have um, have closed their dark rooms, we've been able to um, to maintain ours, and they're they're just they're fantastic. So you can do your thirty five mil processing, medium format processing, and um, and large format four by five and eight by ten as well. So really lucky to have um, to be really well supported in our spaces, but as well as our equipment, which we can loan to students. So that brings us to how to apply. Uh, so the dates for non-year 12 students, these are direct applications uh, for trimester 3 2020. Um, applications close on Sunday, the 1st of November 2020. Um, for trimester 1 2021, applications close on Sunday, the 21st of February 2021. For year 12 students, that is VTAC applications, um, stu uh, prospective students will need to apply through VTAC in September 2020 to start in trimester one, 2021. Excellent. And Cam, could you tell us about the portfolio requirements? This yeah. is for both photography and visual art. Yep. So you're going to need uh, six to eight uh, key images that represent your work, either in series um, that may have you working uh, in a particular, you know, with a very particular approach, whether it be drawing, painting, photography, video, uh, performance, you'll need to um, uh, 
also think about how those images fit together and that can be explained in the portfolio requirements. Sorry, I just had a strange um, horn outside. Oh, but uh, 250 words that talk to what, why, and how you make art. Um, and the most important thing about those words, I guess, is to demonstrate that you have a real passion for, um, for coming and making work with us. And uh, hopefully we can, we can um, turn you into a, a, a really uh, decent artist. Excellent. Tarika, is there anything you want to add about photography requirements there? Um, just to add that, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a resolved, uh, you know, set of images. You know, we're also really interested in seeing work in progress and um, that, is, that is equally as important to give us an idea of, of where you're coming from and the kind of things that inspire you and inform the work that, you, that you're making. There are entry pathways which you can speak to our mission specialists about and at the end I'll, I'll pop up a phone number that you can call and an email, but you can see here on the screen some of the other options that are available to you, you know, including your relevant work and life experience. So um, do inquire about that and, and don't be deterred, ask questions, ask lots of questions. So that brings us to looking at what kind of support we've got available at Deakin. Cam, do you wanna have a word about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So, we have peer mentoring. Um, we all have, which, which will help you meet new people and enable connections and to build relationships, um, not only with your, your um, peers in your disciplines, uh, but also with other people outside of uh, the school and more broadly in the faculty and the university. Um, Student Central is pretty much your, your go-to. This area, I know for a fact, contains a lot of gurus that can help you with all kinds of administrative issues and direct you where to go in, uh, in times of trouble. And then, of course, uh, the academic staff. So we're all very decent people. Uh, we're all collaborative. We're collegiate. And we're always willing to, um, to talk to students not just from the visual arts or photography, but also from across art and performance. And yeah, I should just add there that our, our academic... Oh. So, um, seek Sorry to interrupt you there. You're cutting out a bit. Um, just thought I'd add that all of our staff too are you know, working practitioners and researchers and very well connected and knowledgeable of industry. So they're always willing to kind of share that um, that experience and student central is also the place where you know they'll help you sort out your own course map and make those selections around those electives and all those choices that we've talked about earlier so this is the the phone number here to call if you've got any further questions do get in touch with us and the email myfuture at deacon.edu.au um, so definitely give us a call and you come along to the Q&A sessions, which are happening next. We have 1 p.m. photography, 1.30 p.m. visual arts, and there's a live chat available throughout the day. If you don't get your questions in, there's plenty of opportunities to do that and download our creative arts booklet to have a look at some of our student and staff's work and attend a virtual campus tour and look at all of the different videos and slides of our student work and videos of our facilities that we have available. So a lot more content to find out more about the courses. But thank you so much for joining us today. And we, we hope to see you here.